All right, so we got some wheels and tires in for the dually. Uh, we're gonna put some 35s on it. So we'll see what we can uh, make them fit. They're 35, 1250s. We're gonna see if they fit stock suspension. All right, so just to go over what we're putting on, we have a Fuel Maverick rim. It's a 24 by 10 with a positive one offset. And then tires are gonna be 34, 1250 R24s. And that's going to be on the front. We're going to be running a super single on a dually. And then in the back, it's 24 by 8 or 9, I want to say. I don't know the exacts. And then same thing, the 35-1250 R24 for the rears. And then the spaced out uh, in inner wheels that come from uh, fuel. All right, so minus the normal tools to take off your tires you're going to need some sort of sludge hammer an eight millimeter wrench some needle nose pliers and a little if you can see it there a little nut i'll show you what that's going to be used for later and a butane lighter and then obviously if you have an impact it makes your day a lot easier and if you're going for the uh single uh, super single in the front. If you're doing this on a dually, then you'll need a 13 16 to take off that piece from your hub. All right, let's get to All it. All right, so test fitting the wheels. They rub on the plastic right in this region right here. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to show you the process on one side. It's going to be the same process for the driver and passenger side of this. So let's get to it. All right, so step one, we're gonna take this eight millimeter nut off right here, which is good if you have the limited package. If you don't have the limited, I don't know if you have this little extra trim piece right here. So it could be a little bit different than yours, but if you do have the Ram limited, then you are gonna have this little trim piece right here. But as far as the uh, other ones, I have no idea. But should be a similar process. Uh, depending on what your truck is, just make sure you check behind this piece of plastic to make sure there's no uh, wiring. I know on the driver's side, there's a wire harness right about here uh, in the behind here. So make sure that you're not heating up and damaging any of the existing wire that's back there. So once you get the bolt off, you're going to pull out and away. There's some little clips on the underneath that you're going to pull out from. So... They just slide into those two slots right there. I don't know if you can see those, but those two slots right underneath, there's two keeper clips that hold that in. So we're going to put that aside and we'll come back to that later. So first piece that we're going to do right here, as you can see, we got this little uh, piece of metal right here. We're just going to use our sludge hammer and bend that in a little bit. Or if you want, you can cut it off with a uh, grinding wheel. I just like to bend it because it's simpler and easier for me. I don't have a cut off wheel, so this is the method. So it's gonna be loud for a second. I didn't want to didn't want to record and give you guys all that loud noise. So all you're gonna do, just bend that little tab back like that. And then make sure you hit that up some uh, paint so it doesn't start rusting or anything. And then just bend it back far enough, whatever you need to, to get clearance. Mine, just a little bit of clearance is needed right there, so nothing crazy. Right, for this next segment, like I was telling you, make sure you look behind the plastic uh, mudguard here. And as you can see, we have a wiring harness coming down. So just kind of make good reference of where that's at. Because pretty much what we're going to be doing is heating up this edge right here and then pushing that edge back into this void to get rid of some of this lead out protrusion here so instead of this coming out like that it's going to come in and then more back across right there so we're going to just fill this gap up and take away this sticking out right here all right so once you're ready just get you a little butane torch or uh, even uh, some sort of heat gun will work for this. But get your torch and either your hammer or a pair of pliers, whatever you want to use to push this plastic in. And all we're going to be doing 
is heating up this plastic. Once again, like I said, make sure you look behind here to ensure that there's nothing back here that you're gonna damage by heating this. And you're just gonna nice little bit to get everything kind of preheated. And then we're gonna really focus the heat on this corner that's coming out right here that we wanna invert. So once we get it to where that plastic is really shiny, starting to bubble, you can see it kind of smoking there. We're gonna spread that out on both sides of it. Make sure we're getting this plastic nice and heated. And then use your hammer or whatever and smash that plastic in and hold it until it cools. A lot of people will trim this plastic off. I didn't want to go that route just for the fact that I want this here to protect all that wiring back there still. I don't want water splashing up in there. So you can see just kind of heat it up and then you can see right here where it's kind of smashed in. Now we're going to get this part to go in a little bit. So just heat that up again a little bit and then get your hammer, pliers, whatever you're doing and just get that get that guy in there right into that little void. What you can do to kind of help it hold the shape, just heat up on the outside edges where you want it to hold and let it kind of mold itself in there as you're holding and then just hold that pressure while it cools. And then if you really want, obviously no one's gonna ever see this, so I don't care if it's a little a little janky looking right there, but you can heat it up and smooth some of those imperfections out. Just use your whatever apparatus, hammer, little screwdriver, whatever, and you can just heat that up and then kind of mold that plastic back into a whatever shape you want it to be in. And then right here, we want to get that a little bit more tucked in. So we're going to get these outside edges right here. Once again, Paying attention to what's behind it. Just heat it up and then just kind of mold that thing around that metal in the back. And then make sure you have some gloves on just to make sure you're uh, not burning your hands if you do do it with your hands. But you can kind of touch it with your hand and kind of help mold it around to where you want it. And then, like I was saying earlier, just like that, if you kind of Put a little divot in the plastic where they can see it. Just kind of smooth it back out if you need to. Reheat it a little bit. Then you can kind of smooth the plastic back out as it cools. And then get yourself a nice-ish finish. It's not going to be perfect. It's plastic. You're kind of doing just some backwoods engineering on getting it all in there. So... Don't expect it to be perfect, but with anything, the more time you take on it, the better product it's gonna be. All right, so that takes care of that. Now what we need to do is take care of this protrusion right here. Super simple. All we're gonna do, same concept, just heat around that edge, and then we're gonna put it on the ground and hammer it so that this is flat. So I'll be right back with that. All right, so once you get your piece, same concept. You're going to be trying to hit this right here. So you're going to heat that up on the outside. Get it nice and good back and forth. And then on the inside, right along that edge, get everything just nice and heated. And you'll see the plastic start bubbling here when you're doing it right there. I don't know if you can see that. Once you see that, don't go much further than that because you don't want to totally destroy this plastic. You just want to get it to really malleable so that we can and you want to do that on the inside don't try not to get the uh outside too bubbly or it'll just mess mess up your finish if you're trying to keep it kind of nice so just get it nice and smooth there then we're going to take our hammer and just pound that thing flat and then obviously don't hit too hard the way you're totally smashing through the plastic because on this side it's going to be super super soft and there we go 
you're still gonna have a tiny little bump out in that thing, but much flatter than it was before. So, now what we gotta do, this is just to give it a little extra, and this is where that little nut comes into play. You can see we have a little give back there. So what we're gonna do, right in between your inner fender liner and here, we're gonna slide that nut right back behind there to take up a little bit of space. So it's gonna go right on the back side of that, which is gonna hold this plastic back just a smidge. All right, so this first and second uh, inner wheel well nut, we're gonna go ahead and loosen those. And then that's once again, just a little eight millimeter uh, socket, pretty simple. And we're gonna get our little nut that we got. I don't know what size this is, so find something that's gonna fit in there for you. Uh, obviously make sure the inner diameter of this is big enough for this bolt to go back through. Once you put it through to put back into your inner uh, fender liner here. So once you have these top, or excuse me, next two going up loose. Just push in on your fender. And we're gonna slowly start to slide this nut right behind the fender well, and then in line with the hole that your nut, excuse me, that this bolt, it holds this piece on is going to go through. So once you got it, just get it in there, get it lined up as best you can, kind of put a couple of threads in there just so it holds it. Then we're going to tighten these two back up just to hold that guy in there until we get it back in there permanently with the other uh, nut that holds a little trim piece on. So. Don't over tighten them. I'm sure you heard that little crack of the plastic. It's only plastic, so make sure you're getting everything kind of lined up and everything is tight, but not to where you're breaking stuff tight. All right, once you get that, go ahead and back out that screw. And we're gonna put that trim piece that we flattened out back on there. So. Gonna line up the two little pegs in the bottom. They're gonna slide back in. You heard it click in. And then put your bolt back in. And go ahead and tighten the nut back down to secure it in place. Just like that. Now, once that's on, this lead edge right here is gonna be protruding out. So we're gonna heat up right here and bend this edge in a little bit so it follows the contour of what we already have been working with. So we're just gonna heat right along there. Make sure you get it nice and warm so it can mold to that whole thing. And then either just grab it with your hand with a glove or grab your little hammer and just kind of press it around and mold it to the back of the upper part where you bent that all in and then just hold that in place and let it cool till it holds the uh, shape. If you need to do it a couple of times, then go ahead and just uh, lightly reheat it or hold it while you're heating it so it kind of holds itself in place because this plastic, it's going to have a little bit of a memory, but... You just make it go. So see, I heated it, let it go. It came back just a smidge. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat it one more time. And then we'll get this guy pushed all the way around there. And then we get down in here where I'm heating a little bit more. We can push that in a little bit further and then get the rest of this to take the shape a little bit better. And then once again, just hold it there until it cools and kind of holds that shape. And then same with the rest. 
it's plastic, so it's going to kind of hold whatever warmed shape you give it. So if you start getting a little imperfection from the hammer, use your glove. Don't, don't use your finger. And while it's still warm, just kind of press those back out so it's kind of as smooth as you can get. It's not going to be perfect, but you don't want to look it have it looking totally janky back here so just get that guy a nice molded in there and then as you can see that's kind of a little bit more contoured right there it's not a lot but just kind of gives you that extra little bit of possible clearance need right there which shouldn't really be an issue because the majority of it is going to hit this and then that bump out when that thing's in its stock configuration it's going to hit right around in here in your plastic so once you get that, that's kind of what you're looking for is to get that little piece out of the way, but still there to keep all this wiring right back here from getting water splashed up on it. So if you don't want to melt it, just right along here, you can cut that. And then on your inner fender well, just trim up to about that uh, second bolt or first bolt if you don't have the two side by side like this. And then come across, nub that little corner out and then back around it and then You'll just have a little open space right there. So let's get the wheels on and see if this is going to fit. All right. So last segment of this thing, uh, obviously we got to get the calibration for the speedometer. So what I've got is the Rough Country Speedo calibra Calibrator. It should come with uh, this device, two cables, and then a little uh, USB plug that you put in a cigarette lighter. But I'm just going to use the one that is in the uh, center console here. Um, the instructions show you where to hook it up, but you're gonna hook this part up under the dash, which I'll show you where that goes, and then that'll go into the box, and then just the power cable into there. So give me a second, let me get all set up, and we'll get her uh, plugged in, I'll show you where. All right, so up in here, you can see these green blocks with the little whites. So this white end, I'm gonna get connected. You're gonna go, the instructions kind of point it out to which one you go to, but you're gonna go to the one closest to the actual driver so uh, if you can see so we went to this one right here so don't go in this one there's one that's got two rows on it it's kind of hard to see right there but two rows single row don't go to this block go to this block that's kind of further up in there and then the one closest to the bottom one closest to the driver is uh open so super easy to get to all right, once you get your cable hooked up down there, you can see we have our cable hooked up. We're going to have our power source just going into our 12-volt USB. Doesn't matter. Just plug it in to the uh, cigarette lighter one they provided or in there if you've got it. And then we're going to plug in the cables and should be plugged in. So from there, we're going to go to run. Do not start the truck and then just let it start going. So it's going to just go through its system before you do this you need to actually get a tape measure and measure the height of your tires so these are 35s but i'm going to program them at 34.25 ish or whatever one is right under that because these tires are technically 34 and a quarter all right so it's going to say checking for diagnostic trouble codes And if you have any, it'll tell you. And if not, go ahead and do your thing. So once you go, you wanna go into the program mode, hit yes. It's gonna communicate with the vehicle. To select new tire height, press yes. All right, so let's see. So we can go 34 or 34.25. So I was closer to 34 and a quarter. So I'm gonna go ahead and go that. Then once we get it, hit yes going to say you have chosen tire size whatever and press yes so yes that's what we want so it's going to read and it's going to program so the instructions say it's going to take about 30 minutes it shouldn't take quite that long
All right, and you're gonna hear all sorts of stuff going on with the air suspension and lots of dinging going on. Just let it do its thing. And in here, a lot of stuff's gonna be going on. Once you get it, it's gonna say turn off the ignition and then disconnect the programmer and you are done. Super simple. All right, it's raining out, so I apologize about that, but there we go. 35 1250s with 24 inch rims on the dually. They fit. That's stock suspension, no leveling, no trimming per se. Just uh, what we did with the plastic right there. Just what we had uh, melted and kind of moved around. And then with the positive one offset, you can see it's pretty much right, almost in line. Just barely past the stock fenders. And then in the back, they stick out a little more. But it's fine because I don't want to throw rocks all sorts of up on the on the little paint right back there on the dually section. Then you can see driver's side, same thing. And there is zero rubbing on this thing. So we'll crank it up real quick and give it a little turn of the wheel. Let's see if we can do this thing here. I'll show you how close it gets. And the driver's side gets closer than the uh, passenger side. So, that's how close you're gonna get. So, about a, about a finger's width in there. And then, that's, that's, I mean, you had a, a decent sized bump. Obviously, it's gonna, it's gonna grab, but nothing super crazy. But all in all, came out pretty good. I'm, I'm down with it. I like it. I think they look good on there. Fills the uh, fender wells up nice. I think with the leveling kit, it'd be a little bit too much. You can see, just kind of fills that nice stock fender well. And then in the back, gives a nice little fuller look. But as always, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe the little ring button, all that stuff. Uh, I don't do a lot of videos, but if you guys want to see something specific, I'm going to start working on it. So throw me some suggestions and we'll uh, get it done. I did talk about on uh, one of my last ones, I apologize, uh, but the uh, screens back here, I'll make sure and do a uh, video on those. And then the uh, mount for the iPad that I have up there, which integrates with all of this. So you can play uh, movies on everything through a big uh, hard drive. But anyways, once again, thanks for watching. See ya.